Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. One more game. One more game. See what I take on your front side. I swear. You ain't my daddy, are you? There's gonna be consequences and repercussions. What time is it? Game time. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome again to the Don't Be Blase podcast. We're coming to you live from the House of Pain, otherwise known as Snap Fitness Adelaide CBD. I'm your host, B. Carawana, joined as always by the birthday boy, Steve Burrows. Sup, (laughs) y'all! I'll let you have that one because it was your birthday yesterday and that one will slide. It's it's sticking. Uh, sticking? You've got a bit of a script and I I want a script now and that's all I've come up with, two words. Well, you're ruining my script because before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Larry Ladd. Go see the boys of Ridge Arcade, get yourself an awesome coffee, listen to some pretty sweet tunes, but for now, on with the show. Now, Steve. Yo. 28. 28 again. Again. (laughs) Again. How many years in a row has this been? It's the 10th anniversary. It was yesterday. So how was the birthday yesterday, young man? Um, Well, I woke up, uh, got... Big cuddles with my daughter, which was nice. Uh, went to work, yeah. and uh, that's about it. Wanted nothing to do with you. <laughs> well, he was still in bed. He's yeah. we're, he's dealing with a bit of a cold at the moment. So little man, so he's he's resting. I didn't go to the gym yesterday morning, so I could have those cuddles. Cuddles. Uh, he didn't get up, uh, which is cool. Um, then. And then yeah, nothing changes, man. Dad life doesn't change. Yeah. You know, nothing changes. You don't get a special birthday. birthday. You don't get... <laughs> no, no, you go home, you gotta cook dinner, kids get in the bath, you know. Uh, this has gotta be done. You know. This, so this dad thing you always tell me about sounds like something I'm, I'm really <laughs> looking it. forward to. <laughs> I'm selling it. Um but yeah, so uh, I got dinner tonight with the wife, that would be nice. Um and then yeah, and then it'll be forgotten again for the next uh, you know, three hundred and sixty odd days. Good. Yeah. There we go. That's there we go. That's a good recap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all I got for you. No, that's nice. That's nice. I'm glad. Yeah. How did you go in your week? Your week without me. Uh, yeah, well, it was funny because just before uh, we, we we started recording, um, we had a bit of a chat about what we could talk about, and I said it's funny because last week I had all these ideas. Yep. This week I got nothing. Yeah. And maybe it's because I'm 38 now. Maybe, yeah. You know, it's, it's just the Alzheimer's is kicking in <laughs> the early. Alzheimer's dementia. Real early. Yeah. So um, I got nothing. Um, yeah, last week, what, what happened? I watched the, the Socceroos. Yeah. Um, that was a lot, I guess. Well, that's been that, that, that's that's the basic of the, the topic I want to discuss today, is the World Cup. Okay. So that's that's the one, it's the greatest sporting event, I think we can both agree, greatest sporting event that, that happens in, in the world. Uh, better than the Olympics, only every four years. Now, there's been a bit of a schmozzle, because here in a Australia... Schmozzle. Schmozzle, that's the only way you can describe it. It's the first time that we've had, uh, SBS hasn't exclusively shown the games. And it's had the right sold to Optus, and Optus was attempting to stream it, and has completely balls it up. <laughs> <laughs> There's been people that haven't gotten games at all, mm. things that have been pixelated, it's been an absolute mess. So much so, they've kind of threw their hands up in the air and went, uh, uh, for, the, for, the, for the next 48 hours, uh, SBS can have it, all the games? It's like, why don't, why don't they just let, it, let them run it? Yeah, it's funny, you know, um, I, to me, I, I didn't even, I don't have Optus, so yep. it didn't affect me one single bit. As long as Australia's on SBS, yep. I'm happy. Uh, the other morning, I, I, my little boy, like I said, was sick. Yeah. Little man sick, so, um, yeah, so it was about 3.30 in the morning. I was going to get up and watch the England-Tunisia game. Yeah. And I was like, oh, but, you know, if I get up now, I'll be knackered. And so it must be in the night, the morning of my birthday. Yeah. Anyway, so that was the only other game I was going to watch. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, I'm just keen to watch the Australia games. Yeah. I love the Australia games, um, and I'm looking forward to the Thursday night. Well, I, I got to watch, uh, I, I had that same sort of moment with the uh, england Tunisia game. Yeah. Because I get up normally most days around five. Right. But I'd set my alarm for a few, day, few, few minutes earlier. So it was about quarter to five. And I woke up, the first thing I did was check my phone to see if the game had finished. I didn't know if it had finished yet. And so I saw the score. It was like, oh, one all. I'm thinking one all. It was like 85th minute. I'm like, oh, do I jump out of bed and, yeah. and check out the last five minutes? I'm like, nah, see if I can call that man. Oh, <laughs> anyway, no. so hit snooze, roll over, wake up, see 91st minute, 2-1. <laughs> I'm just like, I should have gone over and watched it. Yeah. It's the one time of the year you just you sacrifice sleep, you sacrifice comfort, and you just go and watch whatever you can. So I was a bit disappointed I missed that. But I did get to watch Socceroos game while I was away. Yes. So I was in a bar in Bali. And really enjoying the atmosphere because I'd made friends with just some random guy that was sitting next to me because the bar was chockers. And he was from Perth and 
we get into chatting about about you know the Socceroos and how disappointed we get with them and blah blah blah. <laughs> okay. And then the other side, like this, this sort of like an L-shaped bar, and the other side of the bar was like six French guys. Okay. And so there's a bit of banter going back and forth, this and that, yeah. And so when they got that first penalty, which got called back on the VAR, which is the most fucking ridiculous thing of all time. Did you and now uh, just quickly? Have you seen? There was a video that they showed that the referee did not see an angle. Yep. And it showed that he got a touch he on the ball. He actually yep. got a touch on the ball. So straight away, flawed system. Well, because the first thing is like the whole point, the reason why they never brought in, in they didn't want to bring in goal line technology and they didn't want to bring in any sort of instant replay is because soccer wanted to be at its purest form, exactly the same game at the little level as it was at the big level. Yeah. And essentially what it was, you had two sideline referees, one in the middle. If they miss something, they miss something. It happens. You, know, yeah. you shouldn't go to instant replay. And the whole point of instant replay is you overturn a decision if it's inconclusive. If it's got, if you've got conclusive, totally, yeah, yeah. inconclusive evidence, bam, you could you could overturn. But that one was still questionable yeah, because there right. was an angle they didn't see. Yeah, and then you see it that they did get a touch on it, and the original call was he didn't call a penalty. That's right. So I mean, it's a bit of sour grapes for us being Australian fans and feeling like we got a little bit cheated. But it was just it's just that's just really frustrating part of the game because. The, the beauty of the World Cup, and I've been saying this to everybody, is, and this is the, the biggest thing that pissed me off about the whole Optus thing, which I understand they had to buy it because SBS had to sell the rights because they had their, their budget cut by the, the government. I get it. But the World Cup is for everybody. It's for... It, we, I mean, we were watching a game when we were away, and the girlfriend's like, why, why are we watching Morocco and Iran? Like, why do you care? I'm like, look at those people in the crowd when they sing the anthem. Yeah. It's it's just getting to that dance yeah. is so important. You know what I mean? Like it's it's the same game all around the world. You know, like you, you go to the Olympics, it's the same countries winning and you know, hundred meter sprints always won by Jamaica or America. You know, what I mean it's just yeah, you know, the Aussies are the Americans are gonna win the swimming. It's just the same, 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 same. But soccer gives the underdog a chance. You know what I mean? Like, there's always that hope in there. Like, we had hope. We had a chance, like, to almost, like, tie with front. I mean, Iceland, 300,000 yeah, people. Wow. Drew with Argentina. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, these great moments. So, it gives all these small countries and just any country around the world that hope and that belief that their people are something special. And to get on that stage is something really special. You guys said you can see in the eyes of the fans and the players when they play the anthems, you know, in like, these people get paid, like I said, Paul Pogba for France, pretty much gets paid as much as our entire team. <laughs> right, right, yes. But you can guarantee he, he he would take his goal that he scored in a World Cup more seriously than any goal he's been paid for to play for his club side. Right. You know I mean? like, to win on that stage is so much more important than any club game you can, you can play for. Um, speaking of which, did you think Australia was... What, what was your view on Australia's performance out of, you know I mean, out it, of... It was classic Australia. Out, out of 10, give it a, a letter. Um, <laughs> no, it's just classic Australia performance. When we play scumbag teams and teams that we should walk over, we'll go down one goal in the first five minutes and then right. have to play catch-up and yeah. hopefully win. When we play world-class sides, we tend to just... We play to our competition. It, very similar to the Adelaide Crows. Yeah. <laughs> if they're playing a really good team, they'll play really well. If they're playing like a shit team... They come in unprepared and they and they end up getting like looking looking very very poor. Yeah. So they just played the way I expected them to play. I didn't expect them to win. No. The fact that it was one all for so long was so impressive to me. Like the fact we we considered it. We walked into uh, it was with with old mate old mate John from Perth. Jono. Jono. When we got to halftime, and it was nil all. He's like, oh, this feels like we're winning. <laughs> I'm like, like so he, he goes, I'd wonder what it feels like to be like a fan of, of France or Germany yeah. or Spain or those countries that expect to not only win game, but win the World Cup. Oh, shit, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, if we win a game at the World Cup, we're like, yes. You yeah. know, if we compete and show our best, we're still proud. You know, But those countries, they, they expect to win it and anything less than that is disappointment. So that must be really, really tough for them. 
That's right. And and uh, <laughs> um, I think France expects nothing less than a semi-final. I think that's what they were saying. Yeah. The semi-final. So to, to take it to them was good. I, I felt like we, we were definitely showing that we were a different class. Yep. Uh, especially those first 10, 15 minutes. We yeah. were... Uh, it was just... Under was just, fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just waiting. I was I mean, waiting. It wasn't just the 30 degrees and the 80% humidity. I was sweating. <laughs> <laughs> was sweating bullets. But uh, yeah, it, it got... Uh, although as the game got on and I think both teams tied a little bit, I think yeah. we got back... We got into it a bit. We got a bit... Uh, um, it's the beautiful thing, like the French guys in the bar were like looking over and just like, why do you guys play everything so aggressive? I'm like, well, our major sports are like tackle sports, so yeah, yeah. I think we kind of take that. I mean, it's like when the boomers play. The the American team's always like, oh, oh the Australians are so rough. It's like, that's just how we are. You yeah. know I mean? like You don't see us taking a butt lane socket. They don't cop the uh, the slide tackle and lay down for an hour. They'll might lay there for a bit. Everything's fine. Cool. Get back on your feet. You know, and there's no diving. There's no theatrics. There's that's just not. Uh, it was not, not, a, it's not our culture. No, no, definitely not. Um, but yeah, I thought. I thought, I thought we did well. I think. Um, you know, two one. We we're, we're, were a little unlucky how that goal went over the line. Oh, yeah, obviously, you know, to, to the one off the crossbar. Yeah, I think it took a deflection up underneath over the line. But even bounced out for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a bit heartbreaking. But uh, I think we got Denmark tomorrow. Denmark tomorrow night. I'm very very excited. We'll be yeah. love watching that one. So you're going to probably get a very excited uh, Stephen Spee on Friday's uh, recording of the podcast. But uh, yeah, it's, I'm nervous. I, we need to win this one. That's the hard bit, dude. We got the hardest group, man. We got. Denmark, Peru, and fucking France. Um, France, who are like top, you know, six, ten, and eleven or some shit in the world, well, man. Well, the thing like, is, like this, this World Cup's been thrown open a bit already. You know, what I mean? like having Argentina draw their first game, uh, Spain and Portugal played that three-all mm. classic. Uh, by the way, I think Ronaldo is now. Yeah, I think I'm going to put him at number one now. I, I, is this, even I said I, I was always a Messi guy. Yeah, but. After that three-goal performance against Spain, mm. and Messi missed a penalty against <laughs> Iceland. Against and it, apparently, I don't know if this is true, but I read somewhere that, that the goalkeeper is some like film director. Yeah, is a part-time goalkeeper. Well, One of them's got I, like. I know the uh, the coach for Iceland is a part-time dentist. Right, yeah. <laughs> and some other dude had to like take apply for leave to come and play World Cup from like some dodgy job he does. You so. know, what I really enjoy about Iceland, it, that? It, not only the Viking club. But the fact is, 300,000 people in the country, mm. you know what rating it got? 99.7%. <laughs> Everyone tuned in. <laughs> that was like, literally like, 99.7, that, that means there's literally like six people that didn't yeah. watch the it was game. like they went to church, it's like, <laughs> and Simpsons is yeah. like, oh, thank you for those who attended the, oh, the game! Oh! <laughs> and runs out the door, you know, like. Yeah, it was, it, it's, <laughs> it was great, but like, like overnight we've had Senegal beat Poland. Yeah, Poland's yeah, ranked right. number eight in the world. You know, and you've had... Egypt, who had high hopes coming in, the Asian, African champions, and they have they've lost both games. They, they went out. down against Russia. And but the, having said that, that poor old Salah. Yeah, he's coming back. Know, off I mean, it. remember that dirty ass old Ramos who yeah. took him out in the fucking Champions League? They went not only Liverpool's hopes, but Egypt's hopes went down. But it's like, and then there's the uh, you know like Germany. Yeah, losing, and this is the great moment: Germany losing their first game against Mexico. Against Mexico, Mexico had seismic readings in the country. Because of all the celebrations, they said that many people jumped up and down at this at their first goal. It actually recorded seismic activity. They thought they were having an earthquake. Wow, it, you... that's the that's the that's what I'm saying. You know, that's the passion and the beauty of the World Cup. That's why this is such an important. Like I said, I'm not a big soccer guy. I don't watch club soccer that much. I don't really care. But the World Cup is just an event. It's just the most amazing sports event there is. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, uh, seismic uh, uh, reactions in my heart is when I was watching a little video of Samuel Hayek jumping up and down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that seismic in, in the heart or the pants? Because <laughs> I noticed my pants got a lot tighter when when I saw that. We're going to take that out of the gutter, guys. This is not us. We're, we're, we're more highbrow than this. Yeah. We're not. But uh, <laughs> we like to think we are. But yeah, I just, I'm just so excited for the, for the remaining games. You know, mm. because a lot of these groups now are somewhat, you know, like they're they're iffy now. You know, I mean, like Brazil didn't win. Oh, oh so Brazil did win. Did no, they win? did. Yeah, Brazil. No, won. they drew. It was the first time ever. I think it was the first they? time ever that it was uh, Germany, Brazil, and <laughs> uh, I think it was Argentina didn't win their first game. Wow. Okay. So all three tied. So, so yeah. Who, so, who did, sorry, who did Brazil draw with? Uh, I fucking, you know I, I don't I like follow-up questions. I know, I know, I know. But I did not I did know. Oh, it was... Um, oh, who was it? Because it was... Because they kept going on about how they tackled... 
They fouled Neymar 10 times in the first half. Right. And he ended up going off at the end of the game with a bad foot. Because okay. he's coming into the tournament with a bad foot. And I just saw today, actually, at training, he, he pulled up early in, in training. And uh, uh, he's going out, so he's... It's he more like a bad heart to me, mate. Yeah, you, step, you get up for the World Cup, you know. <laughs> well, he's only a little boy. He's only, he's only tiny, so we'll give him a little bit of credit. But yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just so much excitement around it, you know. Like, yeah. and, like I said, all these, all these groups are, are not going the way you expected them. You know, you get these underdog stories, you get these great, great tales, you get these people that you'd never heard of. Yeah. And now all of a sudden going to be like household names. You know, like, remember, I think it was the 2002 World Cup, when Senegal knocked out yeah. France, yeah, we saw, was... Liverpool signed a player yeah. from there. <laughs> I think you signed like two of them, El Haji Duf, yeah, El Haji Duf, Duf yeah. that's right. All these guys from Senegal ended up getting huge contracts yeah. based off that one World Cup, and none of them were. So in who did. they beat? They beat France. They I beat think. France, who were the reigning champions. That's right, they were yeah. like apparently the longest odds for underdog for a first game ever. Yeah. Speaking of which, I did see something, and and uh, I know facts don't matter, and I'm not sure if this is correct information, but it showed. Uh, I saw this graphic that showed. Yeah, 98 winners was France. 2002 got knocked out in the yeah, first, first, first round. round. The 2002 champs, uh, whoever the fuck they was, got knocked out in the 06. And it went through. Yeah. And, and the last four or five tournaments... Yeah, whoever whoever's the reigning champion... Yeah. Got bounced in the in the first round. So it's going to be interesting to see if Germany... Well, that's the thing. I'm a big German fan. Like, yeah. I, I love the German national team. I lived in Germany for a while. Like I have a soft spot for Germany. But I'm not confident. You know, yeah. like I, I, whenever I said, oh, they'll probably win it, I'm like, no, nah, no, they won't. Like, I just, I do believe in those sorts of curses. Like, they, uh, unfortunately, to rub this in again, but the, there's, a, <laughs> there's a thing going with the AFL. Like, whoever loses the grand final right. next season, no good. And yeah. your Crows are really living up to that this year. That, you know, it, yeah, it's a little unfair that you know, we are missing literally all of our best players. Well, the funny thing is, I, I did see a tweet today that you might find quite amusing. It was, uh, if any other job place had this many injuries, they would get a stern phone call from WorkSafe. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. The Please amount, explain. Yeah, the amount of injuries that have come in one team is yeah. either like a black cat running around the place, mm. or their strength and conditioning coach is very, very below average. Yeah, that's so right. that's that's the only way you can run with that. But yeah, I believe in those sorts of curses. Well, Eddie Betts apparently is going to miss another four weeks now because he's got a hamstring problem. There you go, close to the tendon. Which are they apparently... just doing heavy? Are they trying to beat your deadlift record? <laughs> <laughs> and they're all just like cramming in some heavy deadlifts. And tell you hamstrings. what, deadlift is Friday. I think. Uh... Oh, you're looking good? Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I'm, uh, not, I'm not getting ahead of myself, but uh, the phone might come out of the pocket. <laughs> out of my bag, should I say. I don't, I don't really bring you into the gym. But... That's, that's allowed, is it? Well, we'll see. For we'll world see. record attempts? Well, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I might... might uh, I'm feeling pretty, we, good. We, I'm feeling uh, pretty good. Can we have like a bloopers reel? <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't come... No, that, that's the rest of my session is usually uh, okay. a bloopers reel. But, Maybe uh, you split your pants. Like, yeah. Like a... I, get up, I get up for one lift. Yeah? You know, I'll get up for one lift. We'll see. We'll see. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I'll keep you posted. We'll, 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 t- we'll put it on the video. Because I'm still waiting for your burpees, by the way. Yeah, true, true, yeah. Well, I, you, I did a lot while I was waiting. There white. should be compound interest on these fucking burpees, man. <laughs> You'd be up to about 300 by now. Well, I'll, I'll run at you this way. Recently, did did go to Bali. Yes. And did some workouts while I was there. Oh, you did? Yes. That's went, good. Went to a gym while I was there. That's was, the last thing I'd do if I was on holiday. Yeah, right? it's because you're fat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Whereas like I, I like to stay in shape, that's sort of my job. Uh, yeah. But I, I I worked out in a, a CrossFit gym. We yep. did sort of a, a mixed boot camp sort of workouts. One involved it was like a thirty five minute workout and was involved some heavy uh, lunges, uh, some wall balls that like you sort of squat and throw a, a heavy medicine ball at the wall, and uh, some sit ups. Right. But we had sit to ups. Sit ups. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mate, you had abs when I met you. Uh, so don't, don't give me this shit. But, I'm old. I'll yeah. take it. But uh, it was every, you had to do 20 reps of each, 18, 16, work your way down to okay, two. Okay, right. Now, what helped motivate you was the fact that we had this Finnish uh, chick that was a strength coach who was quite easy on the eye. And <laughs> kept looking at me and going, come on, Speed, you are very strong. I'm like, yeah, yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to put these down. Uh, and the fact that... Um, Every two minutes, you had to knock out five burpees. So okay. no matter what you were doing, and a couple of times I got stuck, like I wasn't looking at the clock, and I'd finished the wall balls, I sat down for the for sit-up, I'd sit down and she goes, all right, burpees, oh, fuck. <laughs> I had to stand back up. But I can tell you one thing that's very, very true, and I know why teams do it now. Training in humidity fucking sucks. Oh, really? No good? 80% humidity on a 30-degree day, It's it was horrendous. And not only was I going old school, I was training in my Dunlop volleys, at one one of the exercises we did, one of the workouts we did with a group, 
and we had to do a run down the road and stuff. And one of the old guys, there's a guy from Sydney that was running next to me. He goes, mate, what are you, Rod Laver? Yeah. <laughs> Why hilarious. are you wearing the volleys? Yeah. Mate, the shin splints I got on that. I can thing, imagine. I it's don't know idea. how anybody. Well, I was there to show you shoes I brought with me. But, uh,. <laughs> Yeah, like some of the workouts are like, it was like you're sweating in this box, like in this gym and there's fans on you, but you're dying. I'm like, oh, at least I get to go run outside. I'll get some fresh air walkouts. I'm like, no. Nah. I can imagine because you're actually sweating telling me the story. Yeah. <laughs> it's a heavy sweater. I'm a very heavy sweater. <laughs> but yeah, it was just, um, and like there's some things, some of the workouts, like I'm used to pushing through. Like yeah. I felt, I don't know, like you, like <laughs> <laughs> this must how you feel during workouts because I felt terrible like i felt like i was going to die several times yeah so i i understand how you and this i'm not saying now because you know you're a fit fit man now but this is like <laughs> he uh, gave me the most like uh you know wink wink i know how fit you are my no, no, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm talking this is i'm talking maybe five years ago okay yeah five years that's my uh, donut era yeah, yeah donut era <laughs> still smoking steve Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, guy yeah. was wheezy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know how you felt there because, mate, I was fucking <laughs> gasping for air. Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely recommend checking out, uh, working out in, in in humidity just to <laughs> see where you're fit. Because you think you're fit? Yeah. Go train over there, man, and you're just you like, oh man, fit. I'm fucking, I'm shit house. Yeah. This is terrible. But it was fun though. I had fun. How was the rest of your holiday though, man? Tell it me. It was about great. It. Oh, I've got the one good story I can share. Like we just did the standard, you know got around ate really well like you can eat so well so cheap over there and there's and there's so many beautiful people over there that do get taken advantage of by some shitty australian tourists which is just the worst like there's mm. a lot of tourists that like i don't want to say they're like from sort of lower socioeconomic groups here so they go to somewhere that's even poorer than them and they start acting superior which i fucking hate oh, you dude. should never act superior to anyone under any circumstances For but sure. they just all of a sudden they're the ten dollars they have in their pockets worth you know, ten times that there, and they start to feel like they're very special. They got the power, yeah, and they and they use that power. It's like sure. no, they're just people. People are working, and they they are unfortunate. Well, no, they love it, but you know, they they do live in a place where the average wage is five dollars a week, five dollars Australian. Ish. So they have to hustle. They have to yeah, work. For you sure. know, they don't have to treat them like shit. But uh, there's some, some beautiful restaurants and some some awesome places to see. But we decided the government decided we're going to go for a hike. We're going to get up one morning. We're going to hike up a mountain. And watch the sunrise. I've heard about this mountain. You have to get up really early, don't you? Oh, so pick up time, one thirty in the a.m. Wow. So we went to bed about 8.30. And you know when you're paranoid about sleeping through something? <laughs> okay. And so you just can't sleep? You know, right. you just sort of wake up every 20 minutes like, oh, it's time yeah, to yes, 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 yes. So I got about three hours of that sleep. Ouch. Picked up at one thirty. Yeah. Get in the van. I'm trying to sleep in the van. So but, it's more than it's just not you and. Oh, it's just the two of us. Oh, yeah, okay, just the two of us. But yeah. it was like one of those sort of they had those station wagon sort of cars everywhere. So we're driving for two hours. Get to this town. Like I'm in shorts and a, a t-shirt and a, and a jumper. And they said I pack warm. I'm thinking, well, we're going to walk up a mountain. I'm mm, going to be warm. Yeah, you know? Sure. So we start the trek at three thirty. We have our, our, our guy Quas, nice little Quas. Uh, Quas. Yes. Yeah, little. He's a, he was an absolute sweetheart kid. Yeah. You know? um, so he starts the trek up the mountain. And he's just, like, I've got the volleys on. Turns out, <laughs> volleys, really good for trekking mountains, to be okay. honest with you, because they've got a fair bit of grip on Not the Not good body. for running. Not good for running, but if you're just but, walking and yep. walking uphill, good. So we get to a little fork in the road. He goes, right, most of the tour guides go left. He goes, about two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get to the top. He goes, or we can go right, a lot steeper, straight line to the top of the mountain. About half hour, something. Well, no, hour and just over. Oh, he takes, you got to walk up a hill for that long. Oh yeah, this is at like four in the morning. This fucking yeah. sunset middle or sun sunrise, sunrise yeah. should be good. So we're uh, we say oh, we'll take the fast path because yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm not I don't like long slow walks like like in Adelaide if, if you're gonna do Morialto you're gonna do Lofty. Like, sure. Lofty's like an hour, Morialto's like three. I'm like cool. I'd rather take the real steep short one. Yeah, you know, I'm here for a good time, not for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's my motto for a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I've, we decided <laughs> to take. Sorry, Mrs. Yeah. <laughs> Did that work? Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. Not your best, but you know, okay, yeah. we'll let it go. Um, <laughs> we've decided to go the, the short one. So now he, he was even struggling because he didn't realise. I think we 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 we, <laughs> yeah, we do hikes like this all the time. <laughs> so he was just like, "Oh, do, do you want to rest?" And we're like, "No, nah, we're good, man. Just want to get to the top. Like, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, keep yeah. going." So we stopped a couple of times, but we got up in like an hour and twenty. He goes, "Usually we get up in like two hours." So he goes, "You've you've." Like, completely blitzed it. Nice. So we're sitting at the top. We're, like, the second group to get up there. There's, like, two other tourists up there, and there's us. So we're sitting there. Now's the shit bit because, 
like I, I was walking up just in the t-shirt and the shorts, I'm taking the jumper off, but my t-shirt is completely sweat through because oh, it's such right. a hard walk. Of course. So now I'm sitting there with like a wet shirt on, sw- like hypothermia. Yeah, style. I'm getting really yeah. cold. So I've had to take the shirt off and just put the jumper on. <laughs> so, but then I've all got uh, he, like our, our, our man class. He brought us some coffee. Oh, and it was this dude man. Apparently, did you coffee. tip him or not? Oh yeah, gave him good tip. Yeah, yeah gave, gave him the old hundred thousand tip. So that's ten dollars. So it's, it's a lot for them. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, and then we're sitting there, and he brought us a blanket. And he we, he made this is the cool thing because you get to the top of the mountain because it's a volcano, right? And we went over the backside of the volcano, and there's all these holes in the volcano where steam comes out because obviously it's still a, a active, a real, real volcano. Yeah. Wow! So there's and so he puts these eggs in the in the oh, steam holes and, some and eggs cooked, and us, shit. Yeah, cooked us some eggs and made some some egg sandwiches, like some wow. toasted egg sandwiches. That was really pretty really cool. And you thing. tipped him ten bucks. Yes. You well, that's it. The, the, the average tip for those people is like two dollars. So I've gone five. To, I'm, I'm going above and wow. beyond. Wow. So we're sitting there and he goes, oh, we've got about an hour and a half to wait until sunrise. I'm like, oh, good. So I'm sitting there like freezing my nuts off. Like, it's horrendous. I'm like, turn to the girlfriend. I'm like, mate, this better be worth it. Because this is her idea, obviously. Yeah. Not my idea to get up at 1.30 on holiday. Yeah. So we're sitting and waiting and more people are starting to come up and tourists. And then I'm looking at the other tourists that are like, they've brought a change of clothes. I'm like, yeah, right. You go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do this hiking much. <laughs> or we hike in Australia where it's just fucking hot all the time. Yeah. So we're sitting there waiting, 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 and then we start to see like a little bit of uh, sun over the horizon. There's a bit of a uh, fog starting to creep through. We're like, okay, this is not bad. And then a bit more sun, a bit more fog, and then more fog, and then fog, and then it's just fucking foggy. You guys. Oh no way! <laughs> so there's a video up on my uh, my Instagram. We have this thing when our zoo fitness like try to work on your mobility wherever you can. And so I thought, fuck it. Oh, I saw that. No better video, no better time to do it than on sitting on top of a mountain. So I started doing the frog squats on top of the mountain, just sitting there going, this is shit hours, but what what can you do? You know, and our, our man Quas was very apologetic. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry for the weather. I'm so he's like, mate, it's not your fault. <laughs> Did he give you change from the tip? No, no, no. No, no. no we gave it to him on the way down. Okay. Um, no, he looked after us, but yeah, it was just it was one of those like classic stories, just mm. like you've gone through all this effort. To see a beautiful sunrise, and we're like, he got fogged. Someone else showed us photos of the sunrise, and we're just like, you know what? I'm just gonna pinch those photos, put them up, my- <laughs> <laughs> superimpose yourself yeah. on the photos, or something. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, like George, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Get yeah. cropped out. But uh, yeah, it was it was a good time, and still the walk down the mountain was a lot of fun. Like we had monkeys and stuff on the way down. Wow. Yeah, the monkeys just come up to you and stuff like that, and they climb on your shoulders. No, scared shit, the yeah. shit out of me, but it was fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was just, and you get to see a different part of the thing, and it was just a, it was a good hike, it was a good time, but it was just yeah, it was just classic like luck for me to have uh, to climb up, you know. A five-hour journey to lead to fucking looking at fog, fog. and nothing. <laughs> so it was a good time. Oh, good on you. Well, and uh, you recommend barley? Definitely, definitely. Out of ten? Out of ten, I'll give it an A minus. A minus. <laughs> well done. It's a good place, man. Like there's there's places to go. There's I mean, obviously, like I said, you go to Cuda, that attracts some of the worst of the worst of the Australian tourists. But you go through some of these places like Seminyak, Changu, Ubud, you know, and they're really, really nice. Okay. Really, really nice people. Yep. Um. The drinks, to be honest with you, everyone thinks it's a cheap holiday. The drinks are about are going to cost you about the same as they do here. Right. Like obviously beers are a little bit cheaper, and they have their bintang, which is like two fifty or whatever a beer. But uh, if you get ordering cocktails and stuff, you're paying about the same price. But the food, like the food alone, is is worth it. Like we got these big trays of sashimi. Had like fifteen slices of sashimi. You know, like the sliced fish. Six dollars. Yeah. Now you go to. The sushi train, which I do often, you get the one tray of sashimi. It's got four really thin slices, mm. and that's six bucks. Yeah. It's like, why do Australians have to pay so much for food? But the difference is, we actually have to pay our staff, and they don't. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah. But it was a beautiful place, and I definitely recommend you check it out. It's and it's one of those family friendly ones. Too. Yeah, you that's can, right. You can take the kids there. The uh, uh, the Astleys took their family there for the yeah. wedding. So yes, and you can get a nanny for like forty dollars a week. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Yeah, so you might want to do that and then you can get on the piss with Jonah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we'll do, we'll do that. I think we're looking at doing something next year, so um, Bali is definitely on the list. Yeah. I think you know, I wouldn't mind doing anything like you know, mm-hmm. Vietnam and Thailand, but I think Bali probably is, it would be a good... Uh, good starting point. First step. Yeah. Because we're doing a big states tri- trip in uh, 2020. Go on, my Maggie. 40th. There you go. 40th, we're going to go coast to coast. Is the family? It'll be the family. Actually, the two families. All right. Us and Ryan's yeah, family. The, the Winnebago again? Yeah, and we're going to go. That's pretty much. Through Cleveland go. again? 
Are you going to make it to East 8, 118 or whatever it is? East 99, no. East 99, no. We're not going to go to Cleveland. Ah. Uh, you know, it didn't, it, there's not much to see in Cleveland. I'm, I'm not surprised but LeBron wants to get out. why didn't you want to go to Cleveland when Bone Thugs are the greatest hip-hop group well, of I've all time? I've been there, oh, done that, man. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah, been there, done that. Um... Respect to the homies, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we're not going to Cleveland. No, but what we, do, we I'll give you a quick itinerary. We are going to go down south, though. Yep. We're going to go from LA yep. all the way to Miami, yep. uh, all the way through the south. You know, yeah, myself and, and my mate Ryan, we love eating. Yep. And we, and we I was going to say, you're going to come back the size of the house, aren't you? That's right. So <laughs> the idea is to cut down to about 80 yep. by the time we leave yep. and back to 100 by the time we get, you know, well, that's, six, that's, six, six, six weeks. That's good living. That's yeah, that's, that's it, 40, man. you're allowed to do that. That's right. It'll be the final kind of hurrah. Yeah. I am very jealous because I do want to try those, uh, uh, I can't remember, the beignets or whatever, those special donuts they're doing in, um, right. in New Orleans. I've okay. always wanted oh, to go New try Orleans. that. We've gone through yeah. New Orleans. So I definitely want to try that out. And but we're yeah. going to go through Texas because yeah. I haven't been to Texas before and we want to go. I'd Texas recommend a large chicken state. fried steak. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll mm. put that down. Very, <laughs> very good. I've, I've had it. I tried it. I've seen it on like, Man vs. Food. Yeah. Oh, here. Man vs. Food, man. Big yeah. Man vs. Food. Yes, there. yes. And they this, it's like a thin steak and they sort of lightly cook it and then they just batter it and then deep fry it like like KFZ. Amazing. Like, this is the greatest thing. <laughs> yes, that, that sounds beautiful. So, yes, well, uh, that's what we do now. Now it's just a, a constant tag. So, constant tag of these food highlights, you know, like we, yep, this is what we're going to do, we're going to do, we're going to, so our, t- our dinner is pretty much based on eateries, and uh, yeah, so well, I'm, I can't wait, but that's, that's still a couple of years away, so barley probably in between. Oh, sounds good, well that, that's going to be us for this week, guys, we are going to record again in a couple of days, so you'll probably hear some of the same stories repeated, because we forgot <laughs> we said them today, but for speaker, I want to say goodbye for Steve Burns. What's up, yo? <laughs> Stop with the fucking <laughs> sup, yo. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.